freedom I just realized that my mic wasn't turned on, so I apologize for that false start. Um, what's up? Welcome back to Stuck in the House Wednesdays with me, Lewis Beck. And they're literally, I think so far, this is the best day to be stuck in the house. I'm staring out my window right now, and it's pouring rain. And on days when uh, it's pouring rain, usually I just like to make music. So first of all, what up, Gabu Mani Ram? What up, Delirium? What up, Nefertiti? Welcome to the stream. Um, now, I have an announcement to make. We're going to be kind of making some changes going forward. Uh, this is going to be the last week that I'm doing Stuck in the House uh, for house music. So what I'm going to be doing is next week, I'm going to be starting with a uh, Logic section, actually. So we've been working in Ableton, you know, for the past month. But now I'm going to be working in Logic and I'm going to be focusing on hip hop actually for a little bit. So that's going to be a really cool and very different experience. But today is going to be still house music centric and it's going to be the final day. And I'm going to be explaining to you what actually I'm going to be working on in a second, which will be pretty cool. First off, if you are just joining us uh, for the first time, welcome to 343 Labs TV. Uh, 343 Labs is a music production school based in New York City. And uh, we also have a strong presence online, as you can clearly see. And, you know, we offer production classes and music classes in general in Logic, Ableton, song, song, songwriting, mixing, mastering, uh, some music theory stuff. We have unbelievably uh, experienced and talented instructors, such as myself, uh, here at the school. So if you haven't signed up to take a class with us, um, I'm sure there are a few people in the chat that have. I can say for sure that Nefertiti uh, has taken classes with me, and I think she's been enjoying it. So if you have any questions, you know, you can just lob some questions there in the chat to her. Um, and yeah, so for those of you who have been here for the past few weeks, you know that we've been doing these giveaways. I'm so sad to announce that we're done with the giveaways, and now we're just going to be focusing strictly on the content. Anyway... Speaking of which, let's get to the content. So what I'm going to be doing today is talking about house music in the context of sampling. <laughs> three, four, three, stand. That's hilarious. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, Gabu Maniram. This is a great question. If you don't mind my asking, I have a doubt. They say that AI is taking over. It's not even close to taking over, man. Um, please show me a hit song on the radio or a hit song in any genre that is made by a, a computer, exclusively by a computer, and then we can have a conversation. Uh, bottom line is machine learning is coming along at a very you know fast pace, but... Um, it is not even remotely close to a level where it can start competing with actual musicians. Uh, one of the big reasons for that is that a computer can't actually play an instrument. It can simulate the sound of playing and all that types of stuff, but it's still a long way to go until it can actually like um, reproduce things that I do live. So like here in my room, I have drums and guitars and live synthesizers and I have all sorts of gear. And so I think it's going to take a really, really long time for that stuff to catch up. Anyway, uh, if that's the reason you don't want to learn, I'm going to, oops, I'll tell you right now. Uh, that's just, I don't think that that's reasonable. No offense. All right. So what we're going to be focusing on today is actually 
um, we're going to be focusing on sampling and how we can adjust, uh, use samples to make there are robots that can play instruments. Yeah, there are robots that can play instruments a little bit. But anyway, that's a conversation definitely for another time. I'm not going to get a... Uh... Anyway. Um, so, don't believe everything you read on the internet. Um, all right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start by sampling this jazz record from the 60s that I love. By the way, um, if the relationship between my voice and the music, if the volume levels are unbalanced, um, then just let me know and I'll turn down the volume of my stream a little bit. All right, anyway, so this is a song called, uh, it was actually a whole album that I may or may not have illegally downloaded off of YouTube. And it is by Bobby Timmons. It's pretty obscure and it's called Chun King. And there's some cool stuff that happens in the beginning that I really want to focus on um, for sampling. Oop, I think I, my live preferences might have not been set up properly, so that's not cool. There we go. All right. Now, if you can't hear me uh, when I... If you can't hear me when I start pressing play, let me know. All right, so there's a lot of different things that uh, go into sampling, but the first thing is l learning how to listen for something that's useful. All right, now that's something that you can't really teach, but in essence, what you want to do is you want to listen for things that feel like they can be isolated and manipulated. So what I'm actually going to want to do is... is I want to grab those symbols that start on the right side of the mix. All right, I think part of the reason the track is low is just because it's, it's uh, mastered really quietly in the beginning. So as we start producing, I think that'll come up. But you let me know if it continues to be a problem over the next 10 minutes. So I'm just come right here. So right here. So I really want to grab these symbols. I don't know why I'm sewing. It's the only thing in the project. And I'm going to show you a kind of tricky way that you can do that. Because it sounds you're like, wait, but there's so much music happening. How are we going to get just the symbols? First of all, I'm just going to, I'm going to warp the whole thing. Uh, actually... Let's try to get, isolate the symbols first. So one cool thing that happens in Ableton that a lot of people probably aren't aware of is that if you right click here, you have these two different pan modes. You have what's called stereo pan mode and balance pan mode. So the default is something called balance pan mode. Now balance pan mode is kind of interesting because what it does is I'll show you. It basically, So what balance pan does is it actually doesn't move the audio to the right or the left. All that it does is that when you turn it all the way to the left, it just turns down all the information on the right. So as you can hear, if I go all the way to the right, there's still some stuff in there, right? But it's much, much quieter than this. So what it allows me to do is just focus on the symbols. 
right? Now there's still information in the back. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a little clip that I wanna use and just loop it. That's all I want. It's just gonna be that section. I cut that. So this is what I'm gonna loop. That's how I'm gonna start. So what I gotta do is, is first, I have to warp it onto the grid. Now there are a couple of different ways you can go about warping. What I'm gonna do is this actually. And the number, the quickest way, really the, the way that I teach it in a class is not the way that I actually do it. And the reason for that is because it's honestly too complicated to teach it the way that I do it right off the bat. Um, Cause you have to understand warping and music in a way that I don't expect people to initially. Um, so normally the traditional way to sample with Ableton or, or just like a good beginner way to do it is you listen to the song like, you know, from here, from iTunes or something, and then you just tap the tempo to go along with it, right? And then you basically drag it into the project and you warp it. And the reason for that is that what will happen is, is that it'll almost already be warped to the grid just starting off. And so that allows you to avoid some of the headaches of um, needing to do what I'm about to do. And so the number one thing that you're trying to do with warping, for anyone that doesn't understand what warping is, literally all it is is that you're taking the uh, audio and you're locking it into time with the grid in the same way that MIDI would be locked into time. So that if I change the BPM of the project, it doesn't move. So basically the way to do this is you want to find the downbeats, right? You want to find the quarter notes and you want to make sure that they land on the correct spots. So I know that I started with the right note, right? So I can tell that this down, downbeat isn't hitting properly, right? So there's the next downbeat. Ah. Okay, that maybe wasn't the spot. Let's see. And don't worry if it sounds terrible right now. We're going to make it sound really good. Let's try that. So I'll tell you what, before we do anything, actually, that's what I should have done in the first place. So a lot of the times with warping, it's good to actually just, you know, I'm just going to take this off and rewarp this whole thing. Yes, to insert warp mark. Yes, okay. So this is the spot that I need to fall into time. And actually, what a good, a good, a good way to warp is to just take the spot that you know you want to land on the next downbeat and get the whole, and kind of what ends up happening is the whole clip will warp automatically to fit into the space. So let's, if I turn on the metronome, I should, it should be pretty close and then I can just make some small adjustments. Amazing. Now here's the thing. Um, that sounds terrible, even though it's warped. So I need to change it from beats mode to complex mode. So we're gonna get less artifacts. Cool, so I dig that. And just to hear the difference, I'll put it back on beats mode. All right, so you can hear how there's all this like little weird kind of glitchiness. Whereas complex smooths it out more. Now I'm gonna speed it up. I'm feeling that a lot more. All right. So what I'll do is now is I will actually, first I'm going to actually, mm, yeah, no, I'll just freeze and flatten it. So bearing in mind that it's panned all the way to the right, I'm going to freeze this track. Now I'm going to flatten it. Right? That's weird. That didn't work the way I wanted it to. 
Okay, hold on a sec. Hmm. Flatten. All right. Well, there's some workarounds for this. So I can just, first of all, yeah, let's keep it like that. I should be able to take the audio effect, the utility, and put it right on and mono it out. Huh. Well, there's one other way you can get around this. So I actually can just export the clip. We'll go from one to four just to leave a little bit of space. Put it as a wave, and I'll just call this Bobby Timmons loop. And let me just save that to my desktop. Okay. So now what I'll do is is I'll take Bobby Tim oh, come on. Bobby Timmons loop. Drag it back in here. Now this should work. It might not work. And so there's an easy way around this if in fact it doesn't work. Ah, I just tried to warp it on the way in. Don't warp it, dude. We don't need it warped. There we go. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the stereo pan mode now, and here's the fundamental difference. What stereo pan mode does is it allows me to move things in the stereo spectrum without turning them down. So I'm going to hit here and hit zero to put it into the center, and now we should actually have it in the middle. There we go. And so one more time, now what I'll do is I'll bounce it again. This time I'll call this Bobby Timmons loop centered. And now, right here, I'm gonna drag this bad boy in, turn off this crazy auto warping. Don't know why they're doing that. And now I just have this sample chilling for me right down the middle. So this is what I'm gonna start working with. And what I'm going to do is, is I just want to kind of isolate the top end stuff. So I'm going to keep the vibe and I'm going to keep the, 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 um, the symbol stuff. I'm going to use the EQ8 and I'm going to high pass filter out the base. Now there's this little clicking that's happening at the end. So I'm going to just check if it's happening at the start of the clip. Yep. Happening at the start of the clip. And let's see if it's happening at the end. Nope, it's not. Okay. So what I need to do is, is just a teeny, teeny, super teeny little fade. It should loop fine now. actually making the timing get thrown off. Let's try this. All right, there's a way around this. So what I can do is copy this over. And let's hear what's going to happen when it copies. All right, so I want to get rid of that click. So what I'll do is I'll actually back this up. Oh, right now I printed it. Okay. So 
Tell you what, I'm gonna live with the click for right now. I would solve that later in mixing. Just wanna move on with production. So I just wanna find a kick right now that I can use to mess with this track. Now I also have to say, I think my, my um, what should I call my, my chat is bugging a little bit. So I apologize if you guys have been asking questions, I haven't answered them yet. Um, I'm gonna try to go into the chat from a different link. This should work. Okay, track volume's still a little bit low, so that's all right. What I can do is very simply throw on the utility and push the gain. Yeah, so the thing is, I'm just not gonna push this this volume yet, because once we get the kick involved and everything, we'll get everything balanced. All right, let me find. I, just, I think I just want the 909 kick. I kind of like that. I don't know why I'm gravitating towards that. Yeah, okay, sorry you're having some trouble, Paul. Uh, Siri just thought I was trying to talk to her. Come on, I'm, I don't, I don't. What? Get out of here. All right. Yeah, I like that. That's a very big chubby kick. I'm just gonna duplicate all this stuff across. I'm gonna turn up the volume here. All right, so very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build the beat around this sample. Let's call it symbols sample. Ah, let's just call it Bobby Tim and Bobby sample because there's more than just the symbols that we're going to be using. So what I'll do is, is now I'll grab in, am I going to clap? I kind of like that. That's weird. I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer these. By the way, you'll notice I don't use MIDI when I'm actually producing. Uh, I, I prefer to just use. So let's see. Let's see this. I just prefer to use audio. I like how kind of offbeat and wonky that is. I think it maxed, matches texturally. I'll just call this wonky, wonky clap. And I'll do this. And I'll join them. And so I can then cut it here and just have my full audio, which is nicer to work with. And I'm gonna take this clap and I'm gonna blend it together with that. Yeah, so I want the first clap. Yeah, I'll use the, 
I use the 707 clap on the second clap, and the 808 clap on the first clap. So that they have a little bit of a different feeling. Obviously, that's really loud, so I apologize for that. Just bit your ears off. So even without that, let's test it out. So maybe what we'll do is we'll focus on those and layer in the other stuff. And maybe I'll have the second clap actually be wide. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is, is I'll use... This plugin called MicroShift from Sound Toys, which lately has been my go to for making things wide. So, 808 clap, 707 clap. You've probably heard me talk about this before in my earlier streams, but I absolutely love labeling. Preach it. Cool. So the first clap's down the middle, second clap is out wide. I'm also going to save this so I don't lose everything. Let's call this sampling house. Delete. All right. Now, if you guys have any questions so far from things that are uh, happening, please, please, please lob them in and I'll be more than happy to answer. So I'm also just going to kind of like imagine this arrangement a little in my head. What I mean by that is I'm just going to high pass the kick drum for the first 17 bars. for 16 bars and on bar 17 we'll jump it out now I want to find that hi-hat and get this hi-hat involved some upbeat action Whoop. Now I'm going to start trying to play with some ideas for like actual musical stuff. All right. So let's pull out analog. I'm going to try to figure out what key this track is in. It sounds very bluesy, so that is already a helpful thing to know. I'll throw on my headphones. All right. Let's see. Why is my MIDI keyboard not working? Come on. Hmm. Okay. We'll just go from in here. 
I think I got lucky right there, and those are actually the notes. So I'm just going to start by putting those notes down, and then I'm going to build some chords around those root notes. So that's just a two chord progression, which is pretty easy. Let's try that. That's not correct at all. So let's see, let's try to give a This is a minor. Okay, so let's try this. Oops. No. I, I dig that. So that also would be an inversion, let's see. That's pretty easy actually, so that what I'd just be doing there is playing exactly, thank you, set. It would just be playing an A minor seven and then just an A minor. I might just have them actually be slightly just inverted differently. Make it shorter. Maybe just the second one shorter. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to roll with that. And I'm going to work on making this sound a little bit cooler. I like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to also throw on a plug in again with sound toys. Yeah, probably just going to put it out wide again with micro shift. Yep. I'm going to use my uh, return track.
Yeah. Now we're going. Alright, so now let's focus on getting some kind of bass line going on in there. Probably will be inspired loosely by the bass line that's happening in the sample. I'll use wavetable. So I know that I want my down note to be this. All right, so some of you may not know this feature. So I was just playing the bass line on my keyboard, like literally my computer keyboard, and I had my MIDI uh, armed. So if I hit this button right here, it captures my MIDI that I just played. So I like this groove in terms of the rhythm, but I want the notes to be a little bit more musical. So I'm going to do that now. Oh, come on, dude. So a lot of times I just try to musically hum out like what's going on in my brain to try to help kind of streamline my creativity. I'm, I'm liking this little idea that I have going, so I'm going to keep playing with it a little bit more. I'm hearing boom, do, do. Yeah, so we're going this. Yeah. This is what I want. Okay. There we go. I could do this even. Yeah, so I dig that beat. That beat is fine. Thank you, Delirium. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to focus on designing that sound a little bit more. Nice, Dave Freeman. I'm glad you were on the same wavelength. Baseline. All right. 
Dude, I've been working between Logic and Ableton way too much recently and I'm forgetting all my key commands. It's like speaking two different languages. All right. I dig that. So let me get my kick down here. I should first get my that sample out of the way. So I have a certain way that I like to organize my projects. I usually go kick, claps, and then hi hats. I put my chords after the bass line. And it goes kick. So I go drums, bass, and then things that go on top. So Problem is here is that my kick, as awesome as it is, is getting eaten by my bass line. So I am going to do a little bit of side chaining. I also might take away the first kick. Okay, now let's just do that. All right, so drag on my compressor. And set it up. Turn off the makeup gain because that is terrible. Yeah, sorry for that confusion, uh, Andrew. Appreciate you doing that. So here, I'm going to side chain this off the kick. And I don't want anything above 300 to get, let's uh, say 250 to get side chain. So this is a filter, a sidechain filter that's built into the compressor. So little piece of history, little quick history lesson. Uh, sidechaining, as we currently understand it in contemporary music production, is not what it actually meant and means historically. Uh, what sidechaining simply refers to is creating an alternate signal path for something to be processed separately. So it's actually more common in, in, a, in compression to refer to uh, sidechain EQ or a sidechain filter. And what this refers to is you can make it so that the compressor doesn't focus on certain frequency areas. So really useful for, com for compressing bass, but also really com useful if you want to, for instance, sidechain a bass line, but keep some of the harmonic content punching through. Just make the low content duck out of the way. So I'm going to set a really quick attack. Uh, 0.5 milliseconds is totally fine. And uh, yeah, okay. So now I'm gonna just start lowering the threshold until we start hearing that side chain happen. What I like to do is I, I mix on the fly. And so what I mean by that is whenever I hear a problem that needs to be solved immediately, I do it while I'm actually producing just to save myself time and to get myself closer to the project, to the final image that I'm seeing. So I'm going to put on this transient shaper from Isotope. And what this allows me to do is 
focus on a particular frequency area of the kick drum and increase the attack. There's barely anything here. There we go. Let's get a little bit more snap on the transient. Not quite there yet. That's a little close for what I'm looking for. getting closer. We're still going to have to do a little more work though on it. Oh, I'm glad, Andrew Duke. I'm really glad that you enjoy these, man. Um, we're happy to keep giving them. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to do sort of like a parallel compression type thing on the kick, but directly on the channel. So I'm going to compress the shit out of it to try to make it snappier. So I'll set the, yeah, that should work. Attack time, like medium, slow. Release time, actually, I'm going to keep it a little bit longer so it doesn't pump too much. And then I'll turn the ratio up and let's see what happens. All right, so here's what I'll do. Out of here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to create a return track and use that compression setting that I just set up on the return track um, instead of doing it directly on the channel. So, so I can now blend that back in. I'm basically going to use this at the top for my kick drum. Um, now, something also cool about this plugin is I can add harmonics and crazy shit like that. There we go. So that should add quite a bit of thwack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend that back in to have my kick punch through more. And I've changed my mind yet again about how I want to actually incorporate this to the project. So what I'm going to actually going to do is I'm just going to copy this and I'll just put the compressor on after. If I'm just going to use it to that, if it's going to be blended in that much the whole time, then I might as well just, just use it as its own track, its own layer. So let's call that kick top. So now we got this as our kick drum. And I want to catch some of that transient cool stuff on top. So I'll probably use the isotope transient shaper again. I can turn this off. Um, actually, I won't I'll leave that on, whatever. There we go. Now I just have that little snap on top. And again, it doesn't really change the feeling of the kick. It just makes it so in the mix. time a little bit shorter on the kick drum 
using this transient shaper. So it just eats up a little bit less space in the mix. That sounded really good. So now what I'm gonna do is, notice the big part of this is just me shaping my kick, is I'm going to take this compressor, the Bucks compressor from SSL. They actually make their own version of their own plugin, so I tend to use that because I trust them to model their own gear better than anyone else. Wait for that to load. Okay, Beach Ball of Death. Clearly should not have used this plugin. Come on. I know it already refreshed. There we go. Okay, so again, sidechain filter, right? So I'm not gonna compress anything below 185. What I'm looking to do here is just glue the kick to get with itself, with the, glue the kick top with the kick bottom. Just a little bit of compression. Fast release, low ratio. Right, so we feel it tighten up and get a little bit punchier. Now it's playing nicely in the mix. So now what I would do is, is I would pull a 909 open hat. That's exactly what I want and throw that onto the track. Now I'll put that up here. So let's call this open hat. All right. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> that sounds dope. Fantastic. All right, so I'm just gonna copy this over a bunch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna completely just rip off the sample right now and just kind of create a little groove around what I know exists in the sample. Um, and yeah, you know, I said it straight out. I'm gonna rip off the sample. That's the history of house music. <laughs> I gotta be honest, and hip hop. You just gotta take the sample, you twist it, you work with it, and you turn it into, you take a little moment that was never intended to be something big and you make it into something completely different. That's really the art of sampling. Um, I'm actually going to do this with wave table because they give me a triangle wave. I'm going to keep going for a little bit since, you know, we got started a little bit late. And I know some of you guys were, um, you know, struggling to find it because of, you know, some, some link things that were occurring. I just hold on a sec. Let me, I'm going to figure out why this isn't, my MIDI keyboard's not working. Well, that's why using... I don't want you to use the MIDI, the, the Scarlet. Um, that's very annoying. Off. Huh. I should be getting other options. That's really annoying. That's okay. I'll just deal with this later. 
Um, I can still just keep playing it on my on my keyboard. Boom 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 boom. I'm gonna take the neutron transient shaper off the top of the kick. What I might actually do right now is something. We'll see if this works because I'm streaming, so there might just be all sorts of crazy latency going on. I'm hoping there isn't. But uh, my dexterity with my guitar is far superior to my dexterity with my keyboard. So I think I might just throw in some little jazzy licks or something like that. Let's see if this works at all. Okay, so I am getting a little bit of latency, but I think I could work with it. So I'm coming in through an analog preamp right now, and I'm going to slam it with juice. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Like that. Let me give it a little spice on top. I dig that. Maybe make it a little darker sounding. Okay.
figure that shit out. Oh yeah, dude, I love my guitar signal a little bit hot. You want it to be crunchy, man. That's how it cuts through the mix. Um, thank you. Yeah, this is a, um, it's a Fender, and it is made in Japan. It's made from actual mahogany. It's, uh, it's a, whatchamacall, um, limited edition. Absolutely love it. Beautiful tone. So I'm just going to go through here and see if I found a good spot where I really nailed it. Thank you, man. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, is since I'm not a genius jazz guitarist, is I'm going to just copy and paste some of my little licks to make it seem like I'm a genius jazz guitarist. Oh, there it is. Ooh, that shit's hot. That's the spot. <laughs> That's sick. Oh, see, I fell into the groove clearly right there. That's the spot. Sometimes you just find the moment. You're like, ah, okay. All right, so I'm just going to bring this to the start. I don't know why, but that's so hot. Alright, I gotta figure out what part I wanna use. So I'm looking for ones that are more subtle sounding. I like that one a lot. It's like, even though the note gets muted, it feels more musical. <laughs> man, there's nothing like real fucking music, man, to make house music pop off. I'm not saying house music isn't real music. I just mean like real instruments. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a little bit of a uh, auto filter on here. Oh, man, I can groove to that all day. Sometimes you just surprise yourself. Guitar lick.
Thank you, Bobby Timmons. He died at a very young age. Alcoholism got him. But uh, fuck, man. That is a beautiful, beautiful groove. So now I'm going to do is I'm just going to build on it a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend it. So, I'm just going to call these soul chords, and we'll see if we can make them a little crunchier in here. I actually might put a fake amp on them. Yeah. I'm going to show you a really cool trick. I'm going to pan this all the way left. And I'm going to play the exact same thing. And I'm just going to pan it all the way to the right this time. Just make sure I don't get any latency with the amp sim. Thank you so much, Delirium. And also, thank you so much, Dave Schwartz. The, I, I agree. This suddenly... The guitar just added something to it, man, that was missing, you know? I'm, a, I'm just, I, I, everything that I make, I try to make sure that there's something genuinely alive in it. I love the human imperfection. I love the human just element, you know? And I think I'm going to actually add that vocal part in, in a section, in a, in a second. I love the imperfection, the human element. Where are my notes? I never use the notes. I don't know how to get them. No, that's just the drawing tool. Okay, whatever. I'll just remember that. I love the human element, the imperfection. Okay.
cool. So now I have a really wide guitar sound. So this is actually how you get guitars to be really, really wide. Um, yeah, this is how you do it. We also, there we go. <laughs> I love that. A little weird shit on the right. No idea what that is, but I like it. do for one second is you're not going to hear me because I'm going to take this microphone and very briefly plug it into my preamp so that I can get my vocal going. Actually, I actually, mm, yeah, I'm going to do that. Sorry. So just, you're not going to hear me for about two seconds. So there's something called an impedance converter, which I have misplaced, <laughs> but it allows me to uh, take my microphone signal, which is an XLR, which has a different impedance than a quarter inch, and to uh, convert that. And it was literally sitting on my desk, so hold on a second. Okay, well, genuinely have no idea where that went, but I know it's floating around here somewhere, so that's good at least. Um, I just have this other cable that I'll use, so. I had to plug it directly into my microphone. Uh, so you guys should be able to hear me now. Uh, rather directly into my preamp. I should have just done that in the first place. 
Okay, so I want to bring, here we are. I want to check, 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 one, two, one, two. That's nice and crispy and crunchy, just the way I like it. So all I'm going to say is it's all about the imperfection, the human element. i try to be all cool. Here we go. That's going to be fuller sounding. Okay, great. So let's give my voice some body right there. Okay. Let's give my diction a little bit of clarity. So I'm adjusting an analog EQ on my preamp right in front of me. And there's the top end on it, and we're sounding nice and juicy. All right. And I'm back to you. Sorry about that. But uh, from years of working in a studio, I know I can just, my quick plug and runs that I can do. All right. So let's see how that vocal sounds. It's all about the imperfection. The human element. It's all about the imperfection. I like that actually. It's all about the imperfection. The human element. So I couldn't really monitor myself too well while I was talking, so I made it way too thin. I thought I was making it fat, but I actually made it thin. My bad. So I'm just going to take this plug in from Universal Audio and make it juicy. So let me give myself a lot of love at 100. It's all about the imperfection. Yeah. There we go. The human element. The human element. The human element. Yep, there we go. It's all about the imperfection. The human element. The human element. Alright, so let's figure out where I want to put this. It's all about the imperfection. The human element. The human element. Not the imperfection. Cool. Haha, <laughs> this is gonna be fun now. 
Now we have a sample to play with. It's all about the imperfection. The human element. The human element. It's all about the imperfection. The human element. The human element. this over here. Uh, thanks for joining TW Industries. I think I'll actually move these over. You guys have now just caught me in my vibe. Now I'm just making music. I'm not even streaming with you anymore. I mean, I am streaming, but now I'm just fucking going for it. This is great. So I'm going to duplicate this over. And uh, I'm going to play some strings. Play a synth, rather. Du -du -du. Where am I coming in? Let me see. Got my mini log here to my left. And everything is all unwired, unplugged and wired in a crazy way. Oh, that's why. Man, signal flow. So that's what the stock sound on the mini log sounds like, just like the raw oscillator, you know, default setting joint. And so, <laughs> like that one, TWD. And uh, yeah, I kind of want to talk about two David Schwartz, but you know, music is going to feed me right now. Corniness. <laughs> so I'm just going to design this sound while I'm listening. <laughs> It's all about the imperfection. The human element. The human element. It's all about the imperfection. The human element. So let me know if you can or cannot see what the hell I'm doing right here. It's 
So I'm playing currently in a mode called Dorian. So I'm just playing A minor. But I'm taking the sixth and raising it a half step. So it goes like this. It's kind of like joyful, a little bit more playful than normal minor, which kind of can be terrifying on its own. It's all about the imperfection. Improvisation right now. See if I maybe can uh, get something cool going. The human it's all about the imperfection. Crazy scratchiness didn't come through. <laughs> That's what you get for trying to record while you're streaming. Wow, very sick to know, Delirium. Thank you for sharing that. That's really, really dope. Um, all right, so. That didn't work out for a variety of reasons because I'm trying to come in through something that is then converting to digital. So it's causing problems because the stream is probably at a different bit rate. All right, let me see if I record at or certain sample rate rather. Let me see what happens if I record at a lower sample rate. That might actually help. It's all about the imperfection. Oh, that's even worse. I actually have no idea. If anyone if anyone knows what sample rate OBS works at, please lob that into the chat. Spin up 10 ragas. Dude, 10 ragas to a disco beat is such a fucking fire track. Wow. I'm really glad that you know that. Points for TWD. Default is 44. Thank you, John. All right. And also, hello, John. It's all about the imperfection. The human element. The human element. All right, so I'm just going to try to bring in my mini log instead of coming through this UAD thing that is... Making me do conversion on the fly, which does not sound good, apparently. Uh, I'm just going to come in through the Heritage Audio, like I've done before with my guitar and my voice. Hopefully that should sound fine. Also, I can make it a little more colorful and dusty sounding, which could be kind of fun. All right. I like distortion. I don't know about you guys, but I love distortion. Maybe not in that patch, to be fair. All right, we still get a little bit of bite on top. I can live with that. Cool. It's all about having 
some reason the other one was just bugging out. I do is just figure out what the uh, the chord voicing is that I'm looking for, real quick. Uh, yeah, so the it wasn't actually because of the buffering size, but so basically I have this thing called the Universal Audio Four Seven Ten D. It's some, um, it's um, it's really it's it's a solid preamp system. I mean, it's not like revolutionary, but it's really nice. Um, it gets the job done. And uh, what can happen is sometimes I've noticed for some reason when I'm streaming, uh, what it does is is it is converting. Uh, via digital so it's sending it 24 bits uh, and you can change the sample rate all the way up to 192 but for some reason it gets really crackly and shit um, whereas with the uh, heritage audio it's pure straight analog coming in so it's just sounding more normal so I'm just gonna find the chord voicing real quick uh, that I'm looking for so if I'm going a up a full whole step or oh, just C I guess So I'm down to get a little bit trippy right here. I'm going to slightly adjust the sound so it's a bit of a... And I'm over the distortion officially. Let's see how that sounds.
I'm pretty trash with the keyboard, so. The human. fixing what my playing <laughs> channel just for fun I'll like reverse that see if we can do something weird get some weird action oh yeah I like that Time. So 
I might do a little bit of a, like what we call a delay throw. So I'll just, what that is, is where you throw the end of the sound into some delay. So it kind of echoes. <laughs> out better the second time so let me just copy that Classic problem of the bass line is side chaining off the kick and you take out the kick. So easy way to solve this. You just take the utility. Well, put it on the kick. Turn off. I hope some of you guys are still there, by the way. I know I've gone so far over, but I'm just chilling. I'm having a great time. All right. So I'm going to high pass the bass line. Always do that before the side chain, my friends. Cool. Thank. Glad to hear that. Absorption is. <laughs> no idea what to say. Absorption is the key to victory. You heard it here first. <laughs> okay. That actually works out really nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back in. back up to zero six maybe I brought that in too early though <laughs> Line come back in, that's the whole point. Um, so on 81, I'll just pull that back in on 81. <laughs> Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna have the guitar stuff start coming back in but I'm gonna do it kind of more subtly. <laughs> want it to be the downbeat. I don't need the boo in the start. God, 
Damn it, dude, that fucking swing shuffle is so hot. And I do want to, uh... Ah, damn, sorry, Francisco. But the good news is, is that I'm still chilling and uh, working, so you can... There's a little bit of time. Yeah, I agree. The guitar makes the trap. Francisco, I appreciate you tuning in nonetheless, man. Just for this drop. It's all about the imperfection. It's all about the imperfection. It's all about the imperfection. to throw in some uh it's throwing a ride ride symbol uh i typically would source that from a drum machine but this is jazzy feeling so maybe we could just take one of these these guys let's see where we want to go it's all about the imperfection. one for now just to remind you that it exists it's all about the imperfection yes i don't know why i put that on there okay so i'm gonna make these chords a group because they are one thing. Soul chords. And I'm just going to make sure that you hear them when I do that at that moment. So just a little bit of gain utility. Now, this is like the number one best mixing tip I could give you. Is just like turn things up and turn things down. <laughs> it's like so simple, but a lot of people don't do it. Let's get the ride going. Preparing for riding. Let's see. Okay, I clearly faded it way too early. Okay, that probably will work. That works. 
I like that. Ah, Command D towards infinity, because I don't feel like making a loop. <laughs> I love Phaser. That's where I'd throw back in the vocal, right? Because it's now like we're deep in the thing. And I'd probably bring back the guitar towards. It's all about the imperfection. The human element. Maybe just right here. Pull out the kick. when it comes to EQing, if you're making just like house music, choose the first thing you see. <laughs> like, just, just pick something that's going to work. Um, this, I do happen to know this sounds lovely on electric guitars, this, this EQ. There we go. Now he's giving us some shimmer and shine. And a super wide boost at 13k. And that gets us there. The human now it cuts through the top of the mix. That feels like it's probably an organic place for that to end for a breakdown. So let's see how this vibe. It's all about the imperfection. I'm a big fan of these like big open chord sweeps, so that's what I'm gonna try to throw in. This is all just coming from mini log right now. It's the thing human. I now I'm gonna 
adjusting the sustain on the filter envelope to treat it like the cutoff. Okay, so I think that worked. Although it landed a little bit late. Uh, hmm. I don't like to really warp these types of things, but let's try it. here. So I'd probably come in here and do something to the, to the, well, I'm gonna, to the, uh, to the effect of this. back in business. All right, we're building the track back up. Honestly, I think this is the hardest thing to do, is once you get to a breakdown, is to build it back up in a way that is compelling. Okay. 
all about the imperfection. The human element. The human element. the whole copying and pasting with automation is uh thank you delirium is uh one of the banes of my existence it's just one of those things that i wish i could just tell the computer to do it instead of having to do it the human element the human element I'm going to do is I'm going to tease the guitar part without giving the whole phrase away. So I'd honestly, just to make it easier, I'm just going to drag this whole thing over. convince <laughs> can I make the drop convincing um, I, I honestly I don't like doing buildups a I'm I'm honestly lazy it's a pain in the ass and B it's just not my style I'd rather it organically flow <laughs> Honestly, it's just the addition of the open hi-hat should make it work. That's something that I just probably rely slightly too heavy on, but I think house music does in general. Get you out of there. We don't need to start the hat to start off. <laughs> Keep teasing it because that's clearly the best part of the track. So, 
that's what house music is about. Just tease it and tease it and tease it and then bring it back and everyone goes crazy. conversation tonally start occurring this is such a dumb way that i'm doing this but whatever <laughs> it's like such a profound waste of time <laughs> so what i mean is if i change the tone of the second guitar if I don't filter it. Yeah, I think that's a little bit cooler. So now we give people something they haven't heard either, which I'm a big fan of. We'll be subtle with it. Let me put like an auto pan on it so it just kind of like dances. Or, ah, no, you know what? Actually, let's put Pan Man because that's more of a back and forth kind of guy from uh, Sound Toys. All right. Yeah, that looks perfect, actually. No, not like that. Like that. Yeah. Got to put the chords in. That's probably why it felt empty. Ah, it's a little empty. Actually, you know what? It actually, sounded good without him. Sounded eh, looser. I don't know. A little jazzier. Right there. 
quick. I gotta throw this part back in. It's all about the imperfection. The human element. The human element. huge fan of like crash cymbals and those things I think they're actually just so cheesy but uh, I do think that one is called for right here just to end it kind of cleanly what have you done I don't I don't want oh it's an Ableton okay Put in there subtle, you know, just a little bit. The human number. The human number. Actually, wait, so, right. You have that crazy side chaining thing going on, so we'll just do this instead. The human number. Sample rather. Solid two hours work or so. Yeah, two and a half hours. Not so bad. All right. Well, for those of you that stuck around, I really appreciate it. Uh, you definitely got to see <laughs> a lot more than you probably realized you were going to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call it quits. Um, yeah, I hope that you dug that. So uh, a couple of things to announce. Um, first of all, this was the last week, in case you, you missed the start, I know some people struggled, uh, or have, rather than struggled, were having trouble accessing the stream. Um, I mentioned at the beginning, this is the last week of Stuck in the House. So what I mean by that is I'm not going to be doing house music anymore next week. So I'm still going to be streaming on Wednesdays, same time, same bad channel, but, um, I'm going to be switching over to using Logic, and we're going to be focusing on hip-hop. 
which is going to be a total change of pace. And I'm really excited to do that. And we're going to be talking about all different styles of hip hop. If you think house music is, you know, um, super diverse, then, you know, just wait till you get to hip hop. There's so many different strains and strains and styles that are differentiated through like really subtle things. Um, anyway, yeah, that's, uh, I really hope you guys tune in for that. I think it's going to be, uh, really, really cool. Um, and thank you, Delirium. I, I appreciate that you liked the track. I did not expect something this awesome to come out, if I'm being throwing aside all modesty and being completely honest for a second. That was really that was a really fun experience. I haven't made a full house track in a while. Um, so, yeah. First of all, thanks for tuning in to 343 Labs TV. Uh, I know you got a lot more than you bargained for, and, you know, I'm glad that uh, you enjoyed it. And... Um, Subscribe to our channel if you dig the material. Um, there's so many amazing videos that we have uh, from instructors in so many different streams. Uh, you know, Abe Duque is streaming, Claire Lim is streaming, John Selway is streaming, and uh, all such incredibly talented and experienced people. So, you know, if you dig what you hear, do please subscribe to 343 Labs. And again, in case you are just tuning in for the first time and you're not aware, we are a music production school based in New York City with a strong presence online and we're continuing to try to build that presence so you know spread the word as much as you can if you dig the content and um, I'm going to go ahead and say that that does it and have a great day Freedom Freedom